past couple hours with this fella, uh, David Gold, and my kind of guy. First of all, he and he motivates the hell out of me because I'm older than sin, and he's older than I am, and he's still working, and that's all right. I like okay. that. This guy has revolutionized the way we do business in America. The way we do retailing business in America, the way we do marketing in America. He said, How'd you like to be? You young guys and gals that are going to be creating the future, how'd you like to be able to say, I created a whole new form of marketing, a whole niche that there's never been before, a whole way of doing business? The, I can't think of the official title they call it, but, but low priced retail, super low or something, isn't that what they call it? All of those. <laughs> Extremely low price. Everything 99 cents or less. This man started the 99 cent or less store. I keep forgetting or less. And just did a marvelous job. I will tell you how successful he's been. He was listed <laughs> in the Forbes 400 a couple of years ago, back in the early 2000s. That's a pretty good achievement. Not bad. You should all hope to be there someday. But what's fun for me is with this guy that's totally unimportant. He's 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 the most humble, decent, modest man you'll ever meet. And he cares about people like I can't believe. Everything I've ever heard about him, everything I've ever talked to people about. He well, we were talking a little while ago upstairs about he said there are givers and there are takers. And only five percent of the world are givers. I will tell you, this man is a giver. He helps. Constantly doing stuff. Treats his employees extremely well. And it's a very interesting way in life. <coughs> He's here because we're giving him the Conrad Hilton Distinguished Chair or Distinguished Entrepreneurship Award. I got the chair. I'm not giving you that. <laughs> you can't have my chair. <laughs> Conrad we deserve. Hilton Distinguished Entrepreneurship Award, <laughs> which we give. <laughs> Hi. You got a beautiful laugh. <laughs> anyway, we, we give this to people who, number one, are successful in business, but most of all, we want them to be people who care about society, who have ethics, who try and run a business that's decent to the people and gives the customer fair value. I, I got to tell you, as, as I was uh, looking at some of the bottles up here and kidding with my students here, especially my favorite alcoholic student in front here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You've all heard of two buck chuck. Well, I've got news for you. That's got to be one buck, right? Pennyless. 99 cent whiny cent. <laughs> Can you believe that? So I want to bring him up here. Dave Gold is a wonderful fellow, and we're going to give him the Conrad Hilton Distinguished Entrepreneur Award. And if you'll come on up here, I'll read it to the audience. <laughs> there you go. even you on there. Oh, wow. Look at that. He recognized his own picture. It says the Conrad Hilton Distinguished Entrepreneur Award, celebrating the entrepreneurial excellence, exceptional achievement, and powerful leadership. I apologize, I've got a bad cold. Hope you can hear me okay. Uh, presented to David Gold, founder, 99 cent only stores, a brilliant entrepreneur who created a highly successful retail chain and created a new method of marketing and retailing that is much copied. Dave Gold is a visionary who created the future. His success can be judged monetarily by the fact that he achieved a listing as one of the famous Forbes 400. He is a master entrepreneur who brings high honor to the profession of business and entrepreneurship by being exceptionally ethical, humane, and socially responsible. We judge entrepreneurial success not only by the monetary wealth a person accumulates, but rather by the positive impact their wealth entrepreneurial talents, and power have on the world. By these criteria, David Gold is justly deserving of being honored for his incredible achievements and impact on the world. I'm going to put this over on the stand over here. Before you leave, as you walk out, take a look at it and start planning on when you're going to be here for me to give you one of these because I'm going to live long enough to do it. So every <laughs> one of you guys start figuring out which year it's going to be, and I'll be here to present it to you, okay? Fair enough? Good. Okay, have
I'm out of time, Brian. Thank you. I didn't prepare a speech, but I want to thank you and thank everybody for coming here. And it's a few ways I didn't know I was going to get an award. But uh, thank you. My wife is sitting over there. Her name's Sherry. And Sherry and I really uh, founded the company along with our family. But uh, we really, really appreciate all of you coming tonight. And we always can learn from you folks as well. Hopefully, you might learn a little bit from us. Yeah. And uh, we're going to show you some, um, we'll get right into this. And these were on some TV shows that the 99 cents only stores were, uh, were on uh, different uh, national shows. The thing is, I will tell you, before we get into that, I will tell you, the company started in 1982. We used to have a liquor store in the Grand Central Public Market, which is downtown Los Angeles between... Broadway and Hill between 3rd and 4th. We have the liquor department. It was 9 feet wide and 40 feet long, so it was 360 square feet. It wasn't very large at all. But we did put the, all the merchandise we had that went up 16 feet, and then we put the flags from the different countries. And if we had the Irish flag, we had old Bushmills and Guinness Stout and all the other things from Ireland, and then we'd have a Yugoslavian flag with... Schlivovitz, which is a plum brandy from Yugoslavia and all the other products. And we were selling wines at the, at the, not, at the Grand Central Liquor, it was called. And, and we were selling wines, and we noticed that when wines went above 99 cents, there was a resistance. At that time, we had an item called Chivas Regal, and they were, it was 9.95, and it went to $10.25, and the sales just stopped. When we, we, so we looked at the thing, when you went from four digits, three digits to four digits, it really, really slowed up. And on the 99, once it went over a dollar, it was much harder to sell. And this was, the, and this was a, in the 1960s, the very early 1960s. So wh when we, we had wines for 79 cents, 89 cents, 99, $1.19, $1.29, and $1.49. So one day we put out all the wines, your choice, wines of the world, 99 cents. And they just flew. The 79 cent <laughs> wine sold better than it did when it was, it sold better at 99 than it did at 79. And we just did really well. So this was like 1962. And at 1962, we thought, you, you have a good idea. Then six months later, I'm sure many of you thought of an idea to go in business. And six months later, you see someone else doing the same thing. So all of a sudden, 1962 passed, 65 passed, and finally in 1982, we had a friend of ours, he said, darn it, you're going to stop talking about, there's a location over there, it will open up. And our first location was on La Tierra, near LAX, right across from McDonald's. But when we ran the first ad, we just said McDonald's was across from us, and that was our first store. We never planned to grow much, and we live in the same house now that we lived we, we, we've been living there since 1963, so we've been living in the same house for 43 years in a, it, probably a medium-class neighborhood. And he drives a Prius, by the way. <laughs> my wife drives a Prius, too. Those are the only two cars we've had because we really want to have less dependency on foreign oil and uh, less pollution. And it's very important to have clear skies. and clear. My wife was very involved with... Uh, the Clean Air Council back in 19, the early 1960s, and the environment was very dear to her, and that I also agreed with her. And that's how we got started. And, the, and when we opened up the first store in 1982, it was on Friday the 13th of August, and we, the next store we opened up was on December 7th. So we always pick these very, very interesting dates. And, <laughs> and when we opened up, we all got from the off, not the office, from our home. We kept on calling the medias. We did not, we did not have any press release or anything like that. We really didn't know what that was. And we started calling up the media and saying, there's hundreds of people on La Tierra. We don't know. It must be a riot. It must be something. So we kept on calling and calling and calling. And finally, when we opened, there was a, there was a paper in Los Angeles called the Herald Examiner. We were on the front page of that. The very next day on the 14th, we were on every channel, including uh, C uh, CNN, that started in 1982, a few months before. 
The only channel we were not on was uh, Channel 7, but we are on every single channel. And then even today, <coughs> when we go in the cities we've never been into, we still do the same thing. And then about the third or fourth store in the area, they call, when you call them up, they said, we know what you're doing. <laughs> we're not going to cover you now. So basically, that's how it got started. And Patty has some, um, this was the first store we opened up in Phoenix area. Uh, well, there's a store in town that will soon be offering 99-cent iPods, the 99-cent store. And the Indian School on 51st Avenue is kicking off its grand opening this morning by selling iPod Nanos for only 99 cents instead of the regular 200 bucks. I think it's even $100 in some places, but the offer is only good for the first nine customers. The store opens at 8 a.m. this morning, and as you can imagine, there's already folks there in line. You and I've actually been here for two days straight. First person to get here. Uh, it's getting pretty exciting now. When I got here, it was just me and one other person. Even if you're not one of the first nine customers, you can still get a smoking deal. But again, there's a catch. Scooters, similar to Razor scooters, will be offered for 99 cents for the next 99 customers. We were on every channel in uh, Phoenix, and uh, the, just show you a couple more of these. Good morning, Arizona. Oh, iPod Nanos for 99 cents. Sound a little too good to be true? Well, not for these folks who camped out in front of the new 99 cent store at Indian School and 51st Avenue. The store is kicking off its grand opening this morning by selling the iPods for only 99 cents instead of the regular. 100 or 200 bucks. The offer is only good for the first nine customers. That's why these folks are camping out. The store opens at 8 o'clock this morning, but you may have to contend with some diehard customers anxious to nab those first juicy, de juicy deals. And we asked one man why he is in line. This is why I'm out here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Customers will also receive scooters for 99 cents. And you get the we'll play one more of this. Okay, these. Scott, Tara, and Brad. Thanks for watching Good Day Arizona on Wii TV, Arizona's family. Cent store lived up to its name by offering 99 cent iPods. But don't get too excited. The doors opened at 8 this morning to the new store on Indian School and 51st Avenue. And the first nine guests were offered the chance to buy the iPods for 99 cents. Of course, there were some people already in line. Well, because I thought this was a really cool um, thing for people to do, and I've actually been here for two days straight. First person to get here. And it's getting pretty exciting now. When I got here, it was just me and one other person. <laughs> scooters, similar to the Razor scooters, are also offered at 99 cents for the next 99 customers. And obviously, they have a little entertainment yes. out there. Yeah. Well, let's get one more channel on this because every channel covered it, but I guess they put this on three times in a row on the, on the DVD. That's it. Okay, fine. The next one's against Good Morning America or Good America, I think something like that. This should give you some ideas on how you can do the public. <laughs> See, we also right, we also thought if we gave them away, we wouldn't get much publicity. But by selling them, it was kind of a gimme. I remember when we first opened Bonds, gave 18 cars away, one, one each week had very little publicity. But if they sold them for a few bucks or something like that. Not far from some of the world's most lavish stores in Beverly, there's one that's a penny pincher's paradise. Nothing here costs more than 99 cents. I came to the dollar store today because I wanted a quick, cheap buy. You're getting more for your money, to me. 
and I recommend anybody that comes to me, I really do, <laughs> believe me. To aspirin, batteries, to bagels, computer cables, to clothing, the merchandise moves fast. So this is where the jackets are? This is where the jackets were. They brought out a whole full display, there's a few left. Gwendolyn Johnson checks out supermarket prices before buying here. I financially is and it saves me a lot of money and I have more food in my house for my kids to eat. Seventy-five percent of American households, according to one survey, shop at these discounters, and it's not hard to see why. We compared eight brand name items at a lost what? nine cents only store with identical ones sold at a supermarket chain. Our bill came to seven ninety two at the ninety nine cent store. But you may be shocked to hear the same products cost fourteen seventy eight at the grocery store, almost double. Why such a big? These are usually the same items that you might typically find in a supermarket. We may have purchased them on what we call a closeout. <laughs> so you might buy things actually from the grocery store and then sell it for less here. We might purchase that at a lower price in the salon. Dollar stores, as they're known in retailing, have become very big business and have among the largest profit margins in the industry. Thank you. Have a nice day. They do billions of dollars every year, and each one of these companies has found the neighborhoods where they do well, and they never know, know where they're going to find their customers. From coast to coast, the biggest chains have grown to nearly 17,000 stores, with $17 billion in combined revenues. We have two types of customers. We have a lower income blue collar customer who, who rely on the store, but the other is are more mid to upscale folks who really just enjoy getting a great deal. They have a lot of fun in the store. Even Hollywood celebrities have been spotted getting bargains. Richard Gere bought sparkling water, Vanna White a toothpaste. In fact, a third of dollar store shoppers have in fifty thousand dollars. I don't need to shop here, but I do. Is it part of the, the hunt for it that interests you? It's actually kind of fun, knowing that you're saving all this money. So whether you're from Beverly Hills or Beverly, Massachusetts, it's now chic to be cheap. For Good Morning America, ABC News, Los Angeles. And then we have two other ones coming. Nothing's a value unless it has quality. And that's the main thing. We only buy one out of 15 items that are presented to us. So, you know, you would assume, and you can see some of these items we have. It's a four foot General Electric, uh, a four foot tube. Of ge it's a General Electric light bulb. This was uh, a thing that was in the LA Times. <laughs> they, they did a thing on $5 wine. And it says, if you got a zero, it says dump it down the drain. One served to your enemies, two sippable. Three is fine for takeout, four is decent house wine, and five was served with pride. The only one that got a five on it was this Stanton Hills wine from the state of Washington, and it uh, was, it's not, was 99 cents. We sold 26,300 bottles in three hours after this came out. And it was just, and they, anyways, it just says here, our highest rated wine was a serious Cabernet from Washington State, the 1997 Stanton Hills late release, from Columbia Valley, a wine that for years cost $15 a bottle can be now found at the 99 cents only store for 99 cents. So the, pro the thing is, there's a certain amount of people, it's hard to get people that are highly educated in the store the first time. It is very, because a lot of people think you get what you pay for, and sometimes you do, sometimes you buy the most expensive item there is and it works out great, and sometimes you buy a very expensive item that doesn't work out great. <coughs> Nothing's a bargain unless it has really quality. And that's one. Uh, the average dollar store, the other three were much smaller. Uh, they have so many more stores than we have, but the average, uh, they, do, they do about $1 million, somewhere between $900,000 and a million a year. The 99 cents only stores in California do $4.8 million a year. Wow. They're very, very busy, and we're very delighted that we are. <laughs> Go ahead. She has a 99 cent computer. <laughs> 
these are some of the items that we have. There's a gallon of craft uh, uh, dressing for 99 cents. One of the things we have, we have a good relationship with all our all the manufacturers. We have never canceled a purchase order in all the years we've been in business. And it's a normal thing that most retailers do to stop selling or something like this, but we just feel it's a commitment. Because of that, they do work with us. And this is one of the items. This is a good item that's in the store right now, J. Papan. And uh, we don't sell anything that's outdated. Because when something's outdated, if someone comes in the store and gets a bad box of cookies, we're, we're, we lost them because they're going to say, no wonder that they're so reasonable. <laughs> Nothing, nothing's a bargain if it's junk. And it's really important that, uh, but once a person comes in, then we really maintain those customers. Anyways, you're all, you're all getting a coupon so you can try. <laughs> if you haven't gotten one yet, Christopher Michael up here on the camera will give them to you after the show. Patty, is it? If not, then we just can go to the next one. That, no problem. If I, I could take a question or two right now, if you'd like, between. Yes, sir. What's the return policy? Return policy, you can, with no receipt, you can bring back up to nine items at one time. And, or you could exchange it for cash, or you could exchange it for another item. Very few things get returned. Very few. Maybe once, you know, very, very seldom. Yes, sir. I live in big. I understand that you could buy, you know, big, big items and save money and sell at a lower price. But when you first started, how did you used to go about getting those bargains? Well, that's a good question. Uh, uh, how, basically, we used to go to trade shows. And one thing a little person can do that a big uh, a person that has a lot of stores can't do, you can go and keep on calling manufacturers. And what we used to do, we used to go to trade shows. I don't know if any of you has ever gone to a trade show, but that's when companies have booths and all the buyers come to them. This way, if you want to go, if, let's say you had a food trade show and they would have Campbell's there, they would have Kellogg's there, they would have Del Monte there, they would have Hunt Wesson there, they would have all the companies there. So you go to, to the show and they show you all the new items. Well, the new items, after the show was over, they didn't know what they would do with the, the items. They would give them away, like at the end here, you, these you can have, but take one. But the thing is that uh, that's what we did. But now with 240 stores, it doesn't really make any sense because we'd only get one display of everything. So you work with it, you take the advantage. Also, when you, when you do have your own business, if you want to open up 15 minutes early or close 15 minutes later or give that extra service or, or, or drop it off at someone's house that's sick or anything like that. So you're, you can be a lot more flexible and you can compete. Fine. But if you're going to go in business and do exactly what everybody else is doing, there's no reason for them to come and shop with you. <laughs> it could be a high end. I remember many, many years ago we opened up a store at 7th and Olive, which was, believe it or not, a high expensive area. We used to sell uh, uh, Esquire magazine from Italy that was $30. And we sold Montplant pens and things like that. And we did really well. But we just, uh, we just fitted you know, that neighborhood. And the neighborhood, Brooks Brothers, was a block away and they had all the major hotels. OK, is that going to go? Yeah. OK, go ahead. This is Ellen Degenerate, I think. Or yeah, whatever it is. Something like that. I love it. I love it. Today is the Simple Life's Parent Builder. A performance by R&D Sensation Sierra. And Ellen takes a trip to the 99 cent store. Coming up next. Ellen takes a trip to the 99 cent store. That was her birthday show. Hello, can somebody help me over here? How 
There was another one that was with uh, Richie, the Tyler Banks, what was that? Uh, Nicole. Nicole Richie. And Nicole Richie went into uh, 
her favorite store that sold purses for $1,400, and she, uh, they were six different colors, so she bought one of each. And then she went to the, and all the paparazzis were followed, the Tyra, Tyra Banks and Nicole Ritchie around. And then they came to the 99 cent only store, and then <laughs> Nicole Ritchie. Anyways, Tyra Banks, uh, she's from Inglewood, and when she was growing up, the first store that we had, she was going there all the time, and she said it was her favorite store. It was kind of funny. And at the end, Nicole Ritchie had $3 left, and she says, I can buy three more items. So it was, it was a cute skit. But uh, anyways, we have got, over the period of years, we have got a lot of free publicity. But quite often, we will, uh, like, right after 911, we put in a, ad in the paper that we just had a little 99 cent only on the bottom of the ad, but uh, we, it, it, it said long may it wave, and we had that the very, very next day in the LA Times and the, in the Orange County Register and that. And then when uh, Bob Hope was uh, 99 years of age, we, we gave that, and also uh, George Burns when he was 99. I guess the next one's gonna be John Wooden in three years, and he'll be 99. But, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, every single person that works for the company, as long as they work for the company at least six months, they get uh, stock options. And so far, they've divided up $96 million worth of stock options. And one thing about retail, it's a very poor paying job that if you work at, uh, if, if, if you work at uh, Walmart or you work at uh, Nordstrom's, it's still a very poor paying job. So we just felt that an easy way to do this was if this company did well, they should get a piece of the pie. And a lot of people that work in retail did not even graduate high school, so it gave them a chance. To, it's like when you, when you go to a restaurant, you very seldom see a busboy that doesn't work hard. And there's no way if they had three jobs, they're still going to wind up being poor. So this is the reason we gave stock options. My wife and I, when we first got married, we'd buy five or 10 shares of stocks and all the, the fat cats would get the options and the people that really worked, you know, never got five or many, just the executives. So it was a way to pay back and uh, we enjoyed it. We lived in, we have been living in the same house, as I said, for many, many years. We're married 49 years and uh, it's been fun and uh, it's really enjoyable for us to see other people do well. And, and we have done extremely well also. So if there's any questions at all, I'll, I'll be glad. Yes, sir. Well, what happened, we, we got, how we got financed, we, we had the store that we sold, so we just opened up the store and we did not get outside financing. And we, we only needed about 10,000 to 15,000 in the first store to open up. And we had, when we sold our business downtown, we had, we had that. So we just opened up as we got the money, we just kept on opening up the stores. And the first year, we uh, would get our money back. And it, so it was, we were very fortunate. And the fact is, none of us ever wore watches, because if you wear watches, you shouldn't really get into business. You really have to. You have to devote a lot of time towards the business. So it was always a little guilty about working really hard. We had four children. and. Uh, and also dividing that with working on the business. Yes, sir? Over the decades, as the, as the value of the dollar has changed, has it ever made you reevaluate the whole concept of 99 cents or maybe going down in price or selling different type items? Well, that's a good question because we, when we got in business at first, you know, first 1982, the inflation was about 17, 18%. It, it would cost you that much to borrow money. But what happens by not canceling the purchase order if we had a store, and let's say we went up to $4.99, they would charge us like $3 for the same items they're sometimes charging us 75 cents for. So the thing is that sometimes the large companies, they'll make it work for you. They're not always going to do that, but quite often they make it work. Like this was Hellman's mayonnaise, which probably never heard of, but it's the largest selling mayonnaise in the world. But here they call it Best Foods. The rest of the country calls it Hellman's. So what they want, they don't want to upset it when they overproduce. So they give us all the Hellman's because Hellman's is not sold on the West Coast. It's sold throughout the rest of the country. It's sold east of the Rockies. And so that's a, that's a quart. And then we had some 40 ounces. This, uh, 
this is a whole thing of Taco Bell. This came from Kraft. This whole big, <laughs> for 99 cents, you can make a lot of dinners with that. And so quite often, and same thing on things like this, where it, it, it probably sold for about eight ninety five, but they make it work. And sometimes they don't. Sometimes they said they'll go out and get it. And what the best deals you get from the, the, our company is deals that are not advertised. The major brands will not let us advertise. Like right now, right now we're getting a whole lot of truckloads from M&M Mars on Halloween candy. Because after Halloween, it's hard to even give it away. But it's all fresh candy. But they just have, they just have too much of it. Every other year, normally, this happens. Where Nestle's may not make enough this year. So next year, they'll make more. And they make too much. And the M&Ms might make too little this year. And then next year, they'll have a surplus. And it keeps on working that way. There's always someone that, and if you call these companies up and ask if they have closeouts, if you call up uh, a Proc and Gamble, or, or you call up uh, uh, Kellogg's, or whatever the company, they all, always say they don't have closeouts, but they all have closeouts. But you always have to keep your work. Yes, sir? How long after you open the first one did you open like the second? And then do you feel like it was a bigger challenge to open the first one, or replicate your success when you started well? Well, you know, uh, we opened up the second one a year later. We opened up in 82, and then we opened up, uh, it was we opened it up in uh, 1983, and then we opened up one, I think, in 1984. When the Olympic Games came in uh, Los <coughs> Angeles in 1984, when they came, we, uh, Russia pulled out of the Olympic Games about two weeks before the Olympic Games because the United States pulled out of the Russian Games four years earlier. Jimmy Carter pulled out of the Russian Games four years earlier. so. They thought that would be a big failure. So at that point, because it was really competitive between Russia and the United States, so we got a call from Adidas. And we had three stores, and they had the Adidas had they they had the official Olympic uh, baseball cap, and they had seven truckloads. And we have always been biaholics, and we purchased them, and we just went through them, and, we, and it really got us off the ground on in the 1984 Olympics. And there were a couple mistakes. We bought, uh, purchased some, um, we purchased some uh, bags, you know, and they had a, a picture of the Olympic symbol, symbol on that. And working in the, and we're all part of our own environment. And we, when we were in the Grand Central Public Market, they used to sell bags, but all the other stores used to give them away. So we purchased all these bags, or like a half a million of them, and we didn't sell very many, so we just used them up. And it, but anyways, you do make mistakes, and uh, that's what life is, that you have some mistakes, and you just rebound from those mistakes. Yes, sir? I don't think we have really a major competitor. We always think we're ourselves are the major. We try to improve it all the time. I mean, we're selling merchandise for the same price now than we did 24 years ago, exact same price, and there's a lot more expense but the manufacturers have been cooperating with us a lot. But I don't know. Uh, the largest dollar store in the country is one called Dollar General. Another one's Family Dollar. And then the third one is one called Dollar Tree. Well, Dollar General sells things for $1, $2, $3, $10, you know, all different prices. And Family Dollar does the same. Dollar Tree sells everything for $1. But uh, I think that uh, when we're next to Walmart, we do well. If we're next to Nordstrom's, we do well. Our best store is on Wilshire Boulevard near Beverly Hills, and we do, uh, we, we do uh, over $9,999,099, $99.99. <laughs> we actually, we do over $10 million there. And the company sales last year were, I could go through the nines, but they were over a billion dollars last year, but barely over a billion. Yes? How did you decide to go public with your business? How did we decide to go public? Well, we went public on the New York Stock Exchange. And we, we went public. And the problem was that all our, assets were in, all our assets were in the business. So what happens, then at that time, it was 55% the death tax, so estate tax. Uh, 
it was 55%. And then we found out, we found out you could not pay, pay your taxes, you could not pay your taxes with Ajax Cleanser. They didn't allow that. <laughs> so, so we thought it gave us a chance to uh, also reward the employees, and it also gave us a chance to uh, uh, sell off a little bit of the company. Uh, the, the stock hasn't done that well in the last three, four years. And uh, even though it hasn't done well, it's still quadruple since, 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 we, excuse me, since we went public four years ago. Uh, 10 years ago, excuse me. Yes? Has going public affected your ability to control how the business runs? No. You know, we didn't grow. How we grew, we grew one store at a time. We didn't go from uh, one store to 10. We went one store to two, and then two stores to three. Then one time we bought a chain of five stores. So we really did, you know, they always say they're the next level. And it really didn't affect us that much because if you grow slow, we grew slowly. Yes, young lady. Uh, what would be the highest price that you would pay for any product to sell? Okay, it? the question was what is the highest price we would pay for yeah, items? Outside, outside, of, outside of selling iPods or, or TVs yeah. for 99 cents. Okay. The thing is, we purchased many times Coca-Cola six packs for 95 cents, and we sell them for 99, but there's no coupon, there's nothing else. But we, we'll go, that's the highest we pay them. We bought truckloads at that price, and we just sell it for 99 cents. It's not profitable, but it's a good deal for the customer, and that's the main thing. Any, yes, sir? We really prefer to own the properties. Uh, I think we own, the, the company and the shareholders own 34 properties. And uh, we're opening up a store, we're opening a store Thursday, this Thursday in Yuma, Arizona, and the company owns that property. And we have no debt whatsoever. And over 150 million in cash. Yes, sir. What was the future location of your store? Pardon? How do you see the location of your store? Well, at first we used to go to the, the question was, how do we choose locations for the stores? At first, we were looking for middle to lower income. And then what happened, we discovered about, well, we had about 30 or 40 stores. The best stores we had, we did, a better, we did much better in high income areas. The best store we have in the system is the store in Wilshire Boulevard. The, second, the best store in Arizona is in Scottsdale. We do very well in wealthy neighborhoods. And one of the things we discovered that if someone, if someone has, you know, is a middle income or upper middle income, they will not go into a poor area to buy things. Some of them feel threatened. They're scared to go in poor areas. But the people that live in poor areas don't think anything about going to Beverly Hills. So it seems we just do better in better area and better uh, income areas. But the people, you know, that's how they got rich. They want bargains, but they don't want any junk. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Dave. I, I, I uh, volunteer at St. Matthew's Church. We're a customer of St. Matthew's Church. Yes, we buy. <laughs> we've been there for 50 years. So we practice it for the preachers because he comes and just buys from the thrift shop all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that might see, be a that's secret. That's good. Know. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, just kind of, it, it's just kind of fun. We like to go there, and you give really good service. And we like to go to antique places, and we don't... Uh, Fancy things don't mean a lot to us, even though you have very fancy things. But this is your, your calling card, so you always give people what they deserve it. Yeah, okay. Thank you. One last question. Did you have any doubts when you first started your business? Or? Sure. Inflation was like 18, 19%, and, and we're selling things for a fixed price, and we think, how long, uh, how long can we exist doing this? And I think there was, both those hands went up at the same time. Okay, go ahead. Can you talk to the value you had with the The thing is, when you're public, you really have to expand. It's very important to expand, if you, because it's not fair to shareholders if you don't expand. We're in California from uh, Redding down to San Diego, and we're in uh, Arizona, also in uh, Nevada, in Las Vegas area. We have 15 stores. And we have stores in Texas, both Houston and, and uh, also Dallas, Fort Worth area. And we're, we're going to go to the rest of the, but very 
you know, we're not going to open one store in, in Portland, Maine, and if the manager doesn't show up, what do we do? So if we go to that area, we're going to open up a multiple numbers of stores. Okay. Well, last question. I was just wondering if Dollar General has, I think you said, 5,800 stores. Yeah. I, I was wondering why you decided to grow at the rate that you've grown with as if you were close to the business. And I was wondering why like, you haven't said anything about the Circle Central. Well, do zero yeah, Dollar General has been in business a lot longer than we have, but they don't sell everything for $1. Oh, okay. And the fact is that we, uh, we don't feel they're our competitor of ours. Have you ever been in a Dollar General store? Yeah. Okay. Or okay. you bought a chair, too. <laughs> 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 take, take a picture of that. Take a picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> And it's one in Papadou uh, Museum in Paris, France. It's a famous picture that is his store. Yeah. So I guess this would be a point where he could say, wow, well, I must be successful. My store is good enough to be fine out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I beg to differ with you. I really think you can be successful if you feel good about yourself. Yeah. And you don't have to have the most money in the world and just have a nice family and good friends. And, uh, you know, Howard Hughes has had a lot more money than all of us put together, and I don't think he was very happy. So, yeah, so yeah. But you're right that success, but. Uh, it's an image that you can have right. in mind. Wow, that's our star. Ab absolutely, and I think that uh, we're fortunate to have, to have him as a, a great, great professor, and he has a lot of ethics. Yes. See, he doesn't. He, my wife says I don't. Okay, thank you. Let, let, let me finish up by saying to you that I think you can see in this man the kind of business person you can be. You don't have to be the crooks that are out there today. You can be a decent guy and do very well. You can believe in what you believe in. I would guarantee you he could afford to buy the Rolls Royce plant, not the car, the plant. I don't know, but I'm, I have no idea what he's worth, but I suspect he could buy something pretty big. Yet he chooses to drive a Prius because that's what he believes in. When you succeed in life, make sure you keep your values. Make sure you live by your values. Don't let success corrupt you. And this is a perfect example of somebody that hasn't allowed that to happen. I thank you all for being here. And I'll <laughs>